four years in the medical school at the University of Washington, postdoctoral, and has been teaching anatomy and embryology in the dental program at Idaho State University since 1981. He was selected as the ISU Distinguished Teacher of 1992 and as the Sigma Phi, as Sigma Phi, Jerome Bigelow Award recipient for combining teaching and research in 1992 and as an outstanding researcher in 2000. Trent has been actively involved in research in the development of origins of vertebrate form for the past 30 years, beginning as an undergraduate, and has published over 80 scientific papers and books. His research has led to the conclusion that there are apparently many constraints in the developing embryo that keep evolutionary change bounded within certain domains. He's published one textbook and has co-authored 10 others. He's also co-authored The Dark Remedy, The Impact of Polydomide and Its Revival as a Vital Medicine and Evolution Mormonism, a Quest for Understanding. Dr. Stevens served the Great Lakes Mission. He served in many church callings, including Sunday school teacher, elders farm instructor, elders farm president, assistant ward clerk, scoutmaster, bishop, and high counselor. Let's give a warm welcome to Trent Stevens. I'd like to thank the organizer of this, organizers of this conference for inviting me to, uh, to speak to you this afternoon. Um, this is a topic that has been of interest to me uh, in my entire education and, uh, and academic career, starting when I was here at BYU as an undergraduate uh, many years ago. Um, and, and I'm going to talk about a number of issues that uh, uh, is in a book that I co-authored with Dr. Jeff Melrum, who is also at ISU. Uh, he will be speaking uh, tomorrow morning on another topic uh, dealing with uh, DNA and Book of Mormon issues. Um, make sure I get this thing working. Do what? Go get Scott. Go get Scott. Either that or a hammer. And we didn't test it on your machine, but you're testing it. I think we'll do. I'm going to get a chair and sit right here. Does that sound good? Yeah. 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 There. Okay. <laughs> it is my belief that I am a child of God. The question is, what does that mean? What part of me is a child of God? My spirit part or my physical body part? Who cares? <laughs> if you're a banker, next. Or a lawyer, or a carpenter, you may not care. But as biologists, we deal with this issue every single day. Next. And physicians, those of us who are teachers, which I'm going to talk about next, um, are interacting constantly with students who are on their way to becoming physicians or me other medical professionals. This is from. Uh, the FDA Consumer Magazine by Ricky Lewis, who stated, the increased prevalence of antibiotic resistance is an outcome of evolution. Any population of organisms, bacteria included, naturally includes variants with unusual traits. In this case, the ability to withstand an antibiotic's attack on a microbe. When a person takes an antibiotic, the drug kills the defenseless bacteria, leaving behind or selecting, in biological terms, those that can resist it. These renegade bacteria then multiply, increasing their numbers a million fold in a day, becoming the predominant microorganisms. Uh, it's been discussed in, in, in issues dealing with creationism and evolution that uh, physicians who don't fully understand in their undergraduate education in biology the implications of evolution are simply perpetuating the problem uh, that's discussed here by Dr. Lewis. So what about teachers? Those of us, how many of us are, are teachers here? Uh, great profession. Those of us who teach biology students, or those of us who are seminary or institute teachers or other religion teachers, and I, and I guess I should, when I was asking about teachers, ask uh, both professional and in, in terms of church callings, because we, and when we add family to that, we end up with basically everybody here, I'm just about here. <laughs> This is a statement that uh, we wrote in the introduction of our book uh, on this issue of uh, evolution in the church. And what it talks about is the fact that we have students who 
in their past education, either at home or, or uh, in, in, say, a Sunday school class or, or a seminary class, have been taught by someone that evolution is not only incorrect, it doesn't agree with the church doctrine, but it's also uh, evil and pernicious to their uh, spiritual well-being. These students then come to a university setting where they're faced with biology classes where they are taught the data to support the theory of evolution, uh, and the concept, as Theodosius Dobzhensky stated, nothing in biology makes sense except in the light of evolution. And that's, it, it, so it's a redundancy to say that I'm an evolutionary biologist, because essentially biology, uh, modern biology is based on this whole entire concept. And so the problem is these students face with this dilemma that ask, should I then ignore what I'm learning in my college classes? And as I then said, go on to become, say, for example, a physician, and perpetuate this problem of antibiotic resistance, uh, or should I ignore what I've been taught in the past? Uh, we don't believe that, that either of those has to occur. We believe that, that uh, our religious background and our biological, uh, the biological data and our religious concepts are not incompatible, and that's what I'm going to be talking about. Going back to this issue of the spirit and the body, Dr. James Talmadge said, in speaking of the origin of man, we generally refer to the creation of man's body. Of all the mistakes that man has made concerning himself, one of the greatest and the greatest is that of mistaking the body for the man. The body is not more fully the whole man than the coat, the body. Now, we can compare that, for example, to the construction of a temple. The Salt Lake Temple was built uh, a granite quarried in the uh, in the Wasatch Front. Those blocks of granite that are part of the Salt Lake Temple were right next to uh, those blocks which are not now part of the temple. And some, in fact, fell off the wagon to roll down the stream on the way down the hill. Are those granite blocks any different from the ones that are still uh, up in the uh, up in the canyon? And I would say the answer is no. If we look at the old Nauvoo Temple. The original Nauvoo Temple, once it was destroyed uh, after the saints left Nauvoo, the bricks, the, the, the blocks in that temple were used to construct houses all over that town. It's the spirit there that's the holy part of it, not the physical blocks. Likewise, with our bodies, we have come from the dust and we will return to the dust. Next slide. In terms of the issue uh, at hand of, of evolution and Mormon theology, the first question is, what is the official church position? Because when a lot of people make comments about this, they're stating their own opinions and not necessarily the official position of the church. Now, the official position can be obtained in a number of ways. When, uh, when, when Jeff and I uh, and Forrest Peterson, who was a uh, student who worked with us on this project, first began writing our book a few years ago, we wrote uh, we went to my bishop and then to uh, our state president and obtained permission for the bishop to write to the first presidency to obtain the official statement of the church, which they, which they then sent us a cover letter and a Xerox copy of the section on evolution in the, in the Encyclopedia of Mormonism. Uh, since that time, the letters have slightly changed, but, but essentially, if you want to look at the official church position, read that statement in the Encyclopedia of Mormonism. And this is part of that. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints basing its belief on divine revelation, ancient and modern, declares man to be the direct and literal offspring of deity. Man is the child of God, formed in the divine image and endowed with divine attributes. Next slide. Now, that was published in November 1909. It answered the questions and raised some questions, like uh, any good statement should do. This is the improvement era for 1910. This is under the heading Priesthood Quorum's Table. It's an anonymous statement. It's not signed by the First Presidency, but it is published in the improvement era. The question that was raised immediately, and in many of your minds, this question may have come up with the previous statement, in just what manner did the moral bodies of Adam and Eve come into existence on the earth? Coming from this other question, when we talk about we, us being child, children of God, does that refer to our physical bodies? That's what this question is really asking. 
This question comes from several high priest quorums, which obviously we're having some very lively discussions uh, around this time, uh, unlike a lot of uh, the readers. Um, 